Jennifer, should we should we get started? Um, we can do uh, introductions if that's helpful. Looking at you, Tom, um, and then um, can do some. Uh, on our agenda, we've got reviewing minutes from two prior meetings, so from April sixth and April eleventh. Um, any public comment? Um, and then finalizing our stipend review program, um, which will be presented to city council tonight. So we've got like reviewing the feedback, reviewing what Pellant, what um, Cameron just sent out, uh, a couple, and um, uh, have a couple of questions as part of that. And then um, talk about the pre-launch survey and getting that out. Um, if we're talking about the city council meeting tonight. Um, it's next week, just for clarity. Next week, thank you. Yes, the 27th. Today's only the 20th. See, it's not June yet. Very as we were just talking about. Um, and then I'm also wondering if you could add in just like a quick like debrief about the meeting um, before going to self-education learning round tables, report back from other city committee meetings, et cetera. Sound good? Anything we also want to make sure we can cover? Yeah, I, I may have to leave if we if we run over at nine o'clock because um... I have to go at nine too. So let's okay. let's do it in a clip. Great. Um, hello, Tom, Shana. Um, I'm on Kent Street. Yeah, you share pronouns, and I'm uh, sure. I'll pass to Michael. Uh, Michael Sherman. Uh, I've been a member of this since we started, and I live uh, on College Street. And I've been on a bunch of other committees over the course of my 36 years here. Jeremy. Good morning, Jeremy Beaudry. Uh, I live on Elm Street in Montpelier. I've been on the committee oh, over a year. I'm not sure how long now, but nice to see you. Cameron? Uh, Hi, I'm Cameron Niedermeyer. I'm the assistant city manager, and we are neighbors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and Jennifer? My name is Jennifer Morton. I'm a city council member for District 3. I live on Cedar Hill Lane, and this is my first meeting with everybody. Happy to be here. Mm -hmm. I'm Tom McCone. I live on Joy Street, a couple houses down from Cameron, and I'm writing an article for The Bridge. Awesome. So folks want to pull up the meeting notes from April 6th and April 11th. They're on the calendar. If that's, I, um, they're attached like PDFs. So, um, let me just pause for a minute. It was helpful for me to see because I had to miss the first half of the special meeting on April 11th. It was so silly. I want to make a motion to approve both minutes for any amendments. I can't make the motion because I wrote them. I wrote one of them. Oh, that's right. Okay, I'll make it. Sorry, and I'm like, and I think Jeremy was going for one. Okay, um, I'll make a motion to approve both sets of minutes. No amendments. Um, great. We got two seconds. All in favor? Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Great. Cool. Um, and then let's talk about the stipend review program, uh, or stipend program, <laughs> the stipend review. Um, so Cameron, um, sent out the email with, you know, a couple of very minor edits, to be honest. I did not notice the edits when I looked through them. Um, but then had a couple of like new ideas or questions for city staff. And if you want to talk to us. So the edits that I sent out um, and Tom, once they're approved here, I will send them to you. Um, you. We're basically just saying that like reiterating that this is a pilot program 
mentioning that it's a pilot program, understanding that it has an end. Um, so that was the only edit that I made outside of adding um, something that came up at your committee chair okay. meeting about sub, um, like sub meetings. Like, um, why can't I think of the word that I'm looking for? Subcommittees. Thank you. Um, so we talked about it as staff, and I think it for a pilot program would be um, uh, hard to manage uh, because it's it's difficult to verify who's meeting when uh, if the committee chair isn't there because that's sort of what's built into this as far as as what um, supports our audit right is approval that somebody was there. And we're getting that from the committee chairs or the staff that's at the committee. And subcommittees, by their very nature, are smaller groups that it's going to be harder for us to verify and keep track of. So um, our recommendation for y'all would be to not include subcommittees in your pilot program. And that if that is feedback that you get at the end, um, we can work with it and work with y'all to come up with a better way to handle that. So um, that's my recommendation for y'all do whatever you want with that. Um, uh, and then uh, we could get into some of the success measures, um, but uh, that was the edits to the to the documents. Yeah. What committees do have subcommittees or regularly That's the have thing. subcommittees? All, any we and just all don't even them. know. Yeah. We warn the meetings. That's the, they are warned, but here's the thing is that they're supposed to be warned, but that doesn't mean that they get warned. Yeah. Yeah, that we're not opening that can of worms. Um, <laughs> um, that makes sense to me. I don't know if there's more discussion that was held in the meeting or yeah. Okay. So approval for having it just be committees, not subcommittees sounds like cool mm -hmm. um and then yeah success measures should we move to that or any other edits to the sorry let's let's finish one thing at a time so we've got the stipend policy we've got the attendance record form and we've got the stipend registration form were there any edits to any of those no i had none i don't have any I think I just, we had the question last week about, or two, whatever it was, two weeks ago about the attendance record and if that could be made online too, like an addition or emailed in is, and I just, that's, um, saw the email or mail, but that there's no online form. Is that right? So, um, I was trying to see, I had a meeting with our website host the other day. Ooh, and, yeah, a new website. Yeah. And so they, I don't know about adding new widgets. Cause I don't, I don't know who would maintain that widget. So um, I think it will be, it will be available online so people can click it and download the PDF, but I don't know if it'll be fillable online. That's something I've got to work on the back end with. So it'll be available online. I don't know if it'll be fillable, but I'm going to try to work on that. And we can start off like this um, and then one, maybe, add things <laughs> I don't know if this is what we're one thought, kind of a halfway measure might be, and I don't know who has the skills to do this, but to create a PDF document that you can input text into that is then emailed, it might it might save some time for folks. That, well, that, that's a template, right? Is what, you, is what you're saying? Yeah. I think so. I will make a note to make try to ensure that that's what type of PDF gets uploaded mm -hmm. to the website. So. I'm supposed to figure out how to do that for my work today. I need to have people sign a thing. And so I will, I, 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 I was looking into Adobe to be able to make an editable PDF. I'm feeling very millennial right now. Cause I'm like, I don't really know. I don't really know how to do that. <laughs> I'll, I'll figure it out. I just don't know. <clears throat> I was, I will say, I will say what's been on my mind. <clears throat> that it's, I walk past post office boxes all the time. It's not such a big deal. <laughs> an envelope and send Hold something. it up, stick it in the mail, yeah. Um, and we got to support the post office or it'll go away. 
<laughs> um, thank our Congress, Postal Service is saved for now. So, um, okay, let me revisit the question. Yeah, any any edits to these documents before going into um, success measures? Okay with them. Uh -huh. Cool. So I, I've been doing a, a lot of back work on this for y'all. And um, one of the things that was brought up in a meeting was making sure that we like along with your um, pre-survey or pre-launch or wow words, your pre-survey, you're also tracking these um, measures. And I thought they were pretty good ones. Um, making sure we're tracking the amount of applications in general to make sure to see if they've increased or decreased. Mm -hmm. I get those directly to my inbox so I can track those that way. Um, the number of vacancies pre and post stipend implementation. And then something that was brought up was adding a demographic form to our online um, applications. The suggestion would be that this isn't shareable and we hold it ourselves I think, you know, we'd have to talk to our lawyer about it. I don't know if it would be this like public record, right? If somebody requested it, um, I think it might be, but um, we hold other information um, private and we redact it before we give it to council, like email addresses and phone numbers because they're not part of a committee yet, right? They're not like a public entity yet. So um, we hold that information back and the idea was that we put an optional demographic or like a demographic form on the application that people have to fill out online to be part of committee, um, to be part of committees, but hold that information from people making uh, decisions about including that person or not, but just for tracking purposes. Um, and then even saying in the form, this is because we're trying to, you know, increase diversity it has no bearing on decision making. We just want to know. And so I didn't know if that would be something that you all would advocate for, but it was an idea that came up, and I didn't want to discount the idea. So, so to be clear, the city council members would not get that information. Is that that right? was the recommendation: um, was to not give council that information. Mm -hmm. Okay. That seems like a real concern. Yeah, I, that seems like legally we would have to. <laughs> just like from my non-legal brain <laughs> and just like ethically that seems like we should yeah keep that separate um uh, before actually maybe oh keep going. let's keep going great sorry oh i just wanted to know if what would the purpose of collecting the demographic data is for so hopefully like the idea would be and th so this is why it's just an idea y'all might not like the idea but um so that people can self-report uh, their demographics so you can see if it changes pre and well that's the problem is we're asking people to do a survey to tell us what their demographics are now but then how do we get that information from people who are applying post stipend right we'd ask everyone to do the survey during like when they get on a committee or or how would we want to implement that so I figured the the idea would be this would streamline that for for this group and streamline that data collection I think that makes a, makes sense long term to see the change in trends, right? Like over a year, but like, right? It's also like Michael's been on CJAC for I don't you know what seven years now, and so you're only filling that form out when you first apply. You don't have to fill it out when you're reappointed, right? Or like, is there any? Right, it would just be on the the form that you have to fill out online, and so it would be okay. sort of Initial. supporting that um, survey that you're doing that's asking existing committee members what their demographics are, and then we could collect new ones because there's no mechanism to do that. Right. And it's all optional, right? Yeah, technically any of the form lines are optional. No one has to fill out everything. I do think like for the purposes of this pilot, it's not necessarily going to be super helpful because we also, I mean, right. I think we'll also have to do the survey, right? It'll be look at like how, who new is joining, but that, yeah. 
we'll have to. I feel like we need like a grad student who works on this stuff to like help us out with like this like data collection and analysis. But like we, we can we can figure this out. Yeah, <laughs> you just have me. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, to be like, okay, of all the new people who have joined, who have applied, and then who have joined, what what is what is what is that demographic makeup? And and sorry, and the demographic questions would probably be pretty similar to the survey, right? It would not just look at like race and gender, but also like home ownership and um, right. basically we would take exactly the questions that y'all are asking on your survey and then plunk them in the application for committees. Cool. I'm having a hard time with this one. It it me rubs me the wrong way. But you know, I'm I'm like the white guy who never hesitates to fill out demographic information. So I, it's, I can't, without having that perspective, I can't say, would this like give me pause if I was not me? Um, so I, I'm really, I have a hard time saying, yeah, this is, this is what we should do. And that's why I asked about the demographic information. I'm Native American. And so anytime I'm filling out a form and, and I'm like, why do they want to know? But then also on the other hand, I know how important certain statistics are and so as an indigenous person it's up to me to decide right mm -hmm. do I want to tell them <laughs> this information or not and hopefully um if there are any um folks that are in alignment with my thought process maybe they'll be able to make their own decision whether or not they want to share those things it's like it's this weird kind mm -hmm. of slippery slope right like you want to be seen and known and counted right but then also it feels a little sketchy especially for native people we're not really into <laughs> we're not into sharing anything anymore <laughs> but i I, I hear what you're saying jeremy and i thanks for that i know for like i remember like in doing research or whatever like the demographic questions for like um you know, academic research is supposed to come like at the very, very end and be like a totally optional like addition on the very end, even if that's like critical to the pieces that you're asking, because if you ask someone their race at the beginning, it like changes how they answer some of the, you know, like other questions, you know, it's like there's all this other stuff around it too. And then I know for like hiring stuff for in my work, like we've done you you do the application and then it's there's a, a, a like a and at the end page it's like and we would love mm -hmm. like we want to make sure that we're hiring from a diverse set you know of of folks who are applying after you fill out your application if you want to click this link and take it to a different survey form we greatly appreciate it you know and it's something like 60 percent of people like fill out the, the separate form but like so it's totally divorced from the actual application and so i just want to i don't i'm like i don't i think that is necessary for hire i mean and that's it is like is this like kind of a version of hiring to be able to does that make sense to try to divorce the committee application from the survey so yes uh however like if you want to if we want if if y'all are interested in having the city add demographic questions to the application we don't have the technical ability to like separate that out right it would need to just be like a little blurb that says you don't have to fill this out this is why we're asking it won't be to, it won't be given to council fill this out mm -hmm. um uh Would a next step be, and this is for continued discussion and maybe review, to mock up a version of the committee application form? Um, and that gives us a little bit something more concrete and also maybe get some feedback from some individuals who we think have a good perspective. Yes, I can do that. Thanks. Yeah, can we send it to creative discourse too? I don't know what that... Yeah. I think Shana's suggestion, though, is interesting because that that would presumably not have any name attached to it, right? So, so 
the, the, the information is gathered on a separate form, um, it is anonymous. Totally <clears throat> that all we know is the, the, the demographic information, not having anyone's name on, on that. Um, that. That might make it more complicated, but it's a, it's a wholly separate form. It's just submitting it separately. I mean, I guess I'm not thinking very creatively and I could put maybe if I, I don't know, I'd have to play around. Maybe I could put a link to like a survey monkey that says like, fill this out for demographic information. And it's just like clicks a link. I think I could be creative about it if that's what y'all want to see. So uh, just a thought for you. Uh, last year I attended some uh, meetings of a, a school board subcommittee where they were looking at how they a whole, whole bunch of issues with diversity uh, equity and inclusion they were dealing with exactly the same question about how to measure whether they're making progress um, and they were dealing with the same issue of confidentiality versus you know um, asking people to share information i don't know what their resolution was but the mm -hmm. superintendent's office may have information about um, you know, if they came up with any great ideas, and if they did, that might save you some time. And that was the Montpelier School Board? Montpelier School Board. Mm -hmm. So the, the superintendent was one of the people, and she was leading the committee, so. Awesome, thank you. You're welcome. So I can bring back more to y'all on that, Shana. Yeah, and I think because we can, we can also start getting the word out about the siphons. Like I think this is not contingent on the launch of this project, right? So, um, I think my only other question on this though was of just running it by creative discourse. Knowing you know we have a couple of those, a couple meetings set up, and I assume this is on the docket for them too, right? And so maybe by. The next meeting or the meeting after of, of running this proposal by them too. Sure, of course. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay, and then uh, any concern, question, reaction to the other tracking measures? So if, um, just tracking the number of applications last year to this year, looking at the vacancies pre and post stipends. Oh, those are easy. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Really great work. Thank you. Do we, do we uh, I should have asked this question before. Do we need to vote to approve the the, the three forms? The public didn't hurt. Uh, so it's a, a matter of record that we've adopted them. So that I'll would make, be awesome. I, I will make that motion. A second. How many seconds? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Motion passes. Um, thank you. Yeah. Nice work all. Um, okay, should we talk about the transition to talking about the city council presentation? Next Wednesday, the 27th, um, 630 ish. I'm making that up because it won't actually be 6 30. um <laughs> we try um, very hard to get all of y'all who are doing like group presentations of external folks first so i didn't know that was an intention that that makes a lot of sense that's great thank you try yeah. very hard <laughs> yeah <laughs> camera works really hard in this meeting let me tell you what <laughs> um so yeah so i um I feel like, yeah, we were so focused on our presentation to um, to the, uh, the you know committee on committees um, that I haven't spent a lot of time thinking about this. And I guess I'm just like, you know, our, our goals for the committee on committees is, is, was pretty different. You know, it was like to get the word out about it and to solicit feedback and to have people share, you know, their stories and experiences of what they're working on in their committees. And... I, even though the goals are pretty different, I think than what the city council goals presentations would be, I think a lot of the content could be pretty similar of like walking through the committee stipend project, 
um, uh, you know, uh, hearing if there's, there's any feedback, things like that. So yeah, didn't know if folks had, uh, yeah, let, or like, I, that's, that's not me stating my opinion um, for how we could start having this conversation and didn't know if folks had, um, had other thoughts. Will, will you, um, you would circulate the, the forms that we just, or the, the documents that we just passed would go ahead of, be, before the council meeting, right? Right. So they would, they would, okay. I mean, it seems pretty straightforward. Yeah. Here's what we've developed for the pilot process and all that. And are we asking for their approval, Cameron? Or, yeah, okay. Oh, okay. But the money, the, the money has already been set aside, correct? Yes. So we're really just asking for the same approval of the documents that we just made, that we just did. Yes, that's my understanding. And, you know, Jennifer can fill out anything that I'm missing. But my understanding was they, you know, you had asked for the money and said, I, we will come back with how we're going to manage it. And that's just sort of where you're at. And I think getting, saying, like, we've already gotten feedback from committee chairs and everyone seemed good with how this is going to go so makes sense to me and i just want to, I, I, this is probably pretty obvious but of just like saying a few sentences at the beginning of just like here's who we are and here was our charge and here's why we became a committee in 2018 um as just like a way of of grounding the conversation too that before, yeah, before saying all of those things. Um, so we'll share the documents. We will, uh, should, we, should we talk about roles or other materials that we would wanna share? Well, the only other one, the only other one which is not yet a document uh, is the uh, how we're going to how we're going to monitor how we're going to evaluate? It. I think I think that should be included in the in the report that we have a plan for that. And, yeah. Uh, but I don't think we have to go any further than that. I think some council members really appreciate a lot of um, information, and some. I get wrapped up, so <laughs> you can find a little hybrid um, spot where I know maybe one or two folks that may ask a few questions, not because they're not interested, but just because that's how they are. They just like to have as much information as possible, if that's helpful. Well, that's doing due diligence. I think that's fine. <laughs> Can't say much else because I'm here. <laughs> I do like the um, idea of uh, including something about the evaluation. Just here's how we anticipate evaluating. The success of the program. So I think probably into four parts of having, you know, intro to CJAC, why we're doing stipends, about the stipend process, what it's going to look like, logistics, all of that, evaluation of the project, what success will look like, how we're going to measure it, questions. Mm -hmm. Sound good? Yeah. Um, do we want to have a presentation or just the materials do you think is good? I don't think you have to go through all of the materials all of again if, they, if you're there circulating them. Are you going to put them up on the screen yeah. or? Um, <clears throat> call people's of, attention to them. Straightforward. It's the it's the policy piece that maybe needs some discussion. Great. So. No need to create any new materials is what I'm hearing, but just be able to have some discussion. Cool. Um, does anyone want to take on any of those pieces in particular? Looking at Michael and Jeremy. 
I don't have any preference. Um, and, and can you guys make it on the 27th? <laughs> oh, yeah, I think so. I'm happy to help, but don't feel strongly about needing to do that. If it's really, if you need yes. some help, Shana, let me know. Um, Shana, I can help sort of summarize the evaluation piece of it, if you'd like. Great. Yeah, I'll I think send that to you. Uh, that's the only thing that I, because it's not, um, we don't have it written down yet. It, um, I, I think it would be good to have that. But otherwise, I think one person doing presentation is efficient and, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's okay. We, we can be there to hear and answer questions if you want, but I, I don't think it's awesome. Okay. So I'll plan on doing most of the talking as per usual. No, okay. <laughs> always, always the talking. Okay, a, go ahead, Tom. Great. Yes. Uh, what, just uh, want to ask about uh, process. So if this would uh, become a, a city policy, not simply a committee policy. So uh, in terms of process, what does the council need to do to approve that? Can they vote on it that um, next Wednesday night, and then it's it's all it's in place or does it have to be warned ahead of time or anything else so it can be voted at that meeting yes okay thank you yeah so just i sorry tom just <laughs> should have done this at the beginning but uh, we went through kind of a two-year process with these consultants creative discourse to come up with these equity assessment recommendations of what right. things that we could do as a committee and stipends is one of those kind of the, the project that we've been tackling for sure. the last little bit we've been asking all these yeah as we talked about in january you know of like getting all these recommendations and got um have a commitment as part of the budget starting july 1st right. to be able to implement these stipends and then but we're basically given um free reign and like making a proposal on how to you know so we got the money for the stipends but not the process and so this is us saying okay this is how we're planning on spending the the funds for stipends this is what our process is going to look like and how we're going to evaluate this pilot project. Sure, thank you. Wow. I, I understand all that and, okay. and the background. I just wanted to check on the, sometimes for policies, um, I don't specifically know how it's always done in Montpelier, but sometimes policies have to be posted and they have to be, you know, um, available to the public for a certain number of days before the council, before a group votes on them. So if that's not the, I just want to make sure that wasn't the process. Not for this, because it's it's a council administered thing. It's not it's not impacting staff. It's not impacting like union staff anyway. And it's just a decision that council can make. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Um, one thing that's coming up for me, Shana, um, when we last met with council, you know, we had walked through a few different scenarios for how this pilot might run, which some were quite complicated actually. And I think we got that really helpful feedback from the person in Essex that really shifted our thinking around just a pile of money, first come, first serve. So yeah. it seems like you would want to explain that pretty well because this is the one thing that was kind of a major issue that we resolved. I'm just writing that down for myself, yep. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Any other ideas, reflections for this council presentation? I think it's a good, I thank you, Jeremy, for mentioning um, that we've worked with other organizations. I think that's important to also uh, mention. I think I was also just like ending it with like an encouragement for everyone to get the word out about these stipends because that's, you know, obviously the most critical part of all of this is saying, think come the, so be think, a part of city governance. <laughs> I think we're depending on Tom for that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Tom. A little bit, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
actually, if, if I may say, I think that's probably going to be much more effective than us putting the word out ourselves. That, you know, yeah. it, it comes through you, Tom. It's, it's in the bridge, which is read by a lot of people. So that's a very important link. And thank you for, for being here and helping us up with that. You're welcome. Starting July 1st, we participate in government and get, pay, get, get a stipend. Headlines. So, great. Got lots of vacancies. Folk out, get, got lots of participation. Cool. Mm -hmm. Um, before diving into the rest of our agenda, real quick, um, of just any, uh, like reactions, feedback, um, responses for, from our committee and committees, um, I, as I like, I like, you know, when you're like, I have so much time, I'm not going to be like, I, I don't, I'm not worried about this. And then of course, that's like when your flight gets canceled and then I was, I mean, I was actually ended up only, I thought I was going to miss it all. So it wasn't that bad, but, um, thank you guys so much for stepping in and making it happen. And I apologize for the chaos that that caused. Um, and it was a pretty small group, but yeah, just like anything, any other reflections? Well, things we want to say. That, yeah. that was my own, my own concern that it was a very small group, not just a pretty small group. It was a very small it was very group. small, yeah. And us, I mean, we outnumbered, we pretty much outnumbered our audience. Um, and uh, um, I, that, I, I wonder what that means. Does that mean that the committee chairs are just not interested in doing this and, you know, on any kind of regular basis because we had talked about doing it again? You know, should we have yeah. should we twice a year or, um, and, I, and I, I don't, I think we need to just get, get some handle on whether this is something that they think is important enough um, to, for us to continue doing it. Because we put more time into planning it than we did actually doing the presentation. So there's oh, a, a, real, yeah. a real imbalance here. And so I think we should, we should really decide what we're going to do if we want to do this again. Can I reach out to the folks who weren't there and like that, that's not a, a problem if, yeah. Okay. You know, I would. You know, I, I. You could ask. Was it the time? You know, the the, 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 the when we did it was that inconvenient? Or, you know, are you just attending too many meetings and you don't have time for any more? Or, or, you know, what was right. it? You know, offer some options and, and then other. <laughs> okay. Let me let me do that and circle back next next I mean or maybe probably in a couple of weeks not next meeting but um, to get a chance to hear back from folks. Cool. Um, we like to have on our on our agenda, although I feel like we haven't been very good at holding it recently because of other things. Having a self education and learning roundtable of being able to share other um, learnings or participations or books or you know media content um, or anything else on that has to do with um, social, racial, economic justice um, to be able to share with um, share amongst ourselves. And so um, yeah, we have that and then and, and just any let's combine that with any report backs from any other related city committee meetings. Um, and other things happening in the city that we should know about. You can just popcorn it if anyone wants to go. Uh, well, just so you know, at the next council meeting, uh, council will be talking about the Girton gazebo again. And um, so if y'all want to participate in that conversation that is happening that night as well. Um, I can just share two things. One is that um, Montpelier has been included in different, um, this like municipal equity index, Montpelier, municipal equality index. I don't remember which one it is. 
from the human rights campaign where they look at um, how the city, um, you know, kind of is like, is evaluated for um, LGBTQ plus folks. And, um, you know, so la they can just like fill out this survey and, um, and kind of get evaluated on different policies and they do it for all of the city capitals as well as a bunch of other cities. And so Montpelier has been a part of that for a couple of years and they just got noticed that we'll be part of it again. I mean, obviously, cause we're still a city capital and all of that. Um, so just um, FYI that that is, as that is coming out. Um, and that that also just, you know, dovetails with the, you know, recent um, murder of a, you know, trans woman in Middlesex who's, who's very, closely connected to a lot of folks in Montpelier and, um, you know, lived and worked in Montpelier for, you know, a long time and all of that. And so I think that was recognized. That was the first I'd heard about it was at the last city council meeting. And, um, and obviously just like a lot of, um, the more like coming, coming off of the heels of a lot of anti-trans, um, sentiment happening nationally is, you know, it was really, it was really concerning for a lot, for a lot of reasons. And so, um, just wanting to kind of hold that in our hearts um, as well. So, and of course, if you know, folks know our too, just to say. I'm sorry to bring that real sadness at the end of this meeting and um, of just if there's anyone wants to say any words of memory or um, or remembrance or um, or to transition transition out with a few minutes to spare. Um, I just, I'll say that I just want to thank all of y'all for taking on these sort of harder conversations and being real thought leaders for the city. Um, this will be a very exciting um, program and I'm just, I'm excited to see it get launched. You have been working really hard for a really long time and um, I'm glad to be part of it. So thank you. Thanks for your hard work on it, Cameron. Mm -hmm. You really did the legwork on it. This is this is a rewarding legwork, okay? <laughs> this is rewarding. This is something good is coming out of this. So yeah. It's exciting. And I understand, but thank you in any case. <laughs> yeah. Thank Thanks. you, Michael. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I as um, a member of a BIPOC community and somebody who is, you know, I got a family that I'm trying to raise and I have a new job that makes that I make more money at, but historically I have not made very much money. And so um, offering a stipend to folks is a lot. It's huge because we're taking time out of our personal life, right? And so to honor that, I think is wonderful. And um, I don't know whose idea it was, but Chimi Gwech from the bottom of my heart for mm -hmm. that, because I think it will make a difference for a lot of, um, especially working family people, you know, single parents, um, people, college students, just people that want to help, want to be involved in um, our city, but just are struggling financially. So thank you so much for spearheading this, y'all. Yeah, let's make it happen. Cool. Yeah. Um, well, see you all next Wednesday night, um, um, and I think that's it. And then after that, we can, once we get this happening, then we can move on to some of the other things that we've got on our upcoming agenda items, like proactive educational events, 
um, outreach to immigrant refugee communities and for Elks Club property discussions, other things too. But um, let's 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 get through this. Yeah, it's gonna be great. So thanks all. Okay. Awesome. Well, thanks. See y'all.